Hey guys, Railroad Sniper here again with another video. This one's a bit of a different format. It's a DIY video today. As you can see, we've got something from iFixit and we've got the iFixit ProTech Toolkit. And we've got my mom's laptop, which is a Dell uh, Inspiron 155567, I believe. Today we're replacing the battery because we got a warning from Dell that the battery has degraded to the point where it can't sufficiently power the laptop. So basically, I keep it plugged in all the time. If you want to get the most performance, plus we noticed that it's bulging a little bit, so definitely want to get that out of there before it causes any more issues. So, you know, not a sponsor. And I got I fix it, I fix it. The reason we chose the I fix it battery is because it comes with a guarantee for one year. Where if you bought a battery on like Amazon or eBay, you know, that's gonna come with like a 30-day guarantee, which is not the best, obviously. So, anyways, let's get straight into the video. First we gotta flip this thing over the toolkit. We're going to need a couple of tools for this. We're going to need a Phillips number one and a Phillips number zero as well as our little spudger, plastic uh, pick spudger thing. That should be all we need to complete this. You can always ground yourself if you feel like you want to as well. It's, that's the best practice. Just not doing it today because honestly, most stuff today is pretty resilient. I've never, I've never had any issues on any new computers like a TSD. So let's see. I think this case comes with a um, magnetic section tray. It does. Oh, well, that's not magnetic, never mind, but anyway. Let's just get the screws out. All the ones on the outside are Phillips number one, so. Don't want to switch any bits for that. This laptop sadly is missing a few screws. I don't know where they went. But they were gone before I was here, so, you know, sad times. Now, while all the screws on the bottom are Phillips number one, they're not all the same. The screws here and here for the DVD drive are a different thread. And I'll show you that when I get to you, when I get to them. Because you definitely don't want to... Put them in the wrong place. I mean, I don't think anything catastrophic would happen, but, you know. Anyways, so, let's see. Here we have the two different screws. On the left, you can see the DVD drive screw, and on the right, you can see the regular chassis screw. So, like I said, just keep that in mind when you're taking this apart and reassembling. And with that screws out, we can take out the DVD drive, set that over there, and now we switch to our Phillips number zero, which is for these three screws on the DVD drive side. These are completely different. I'll show you the last one I'll take out real quick. They have a really wide flat head with the uh, the number zero Phillips. Oops, missed the one at the bottom, I guess. There we go, there's three of those. There we go. There you go, that's a pretty good look there. Okay, now we're done with our screwdriver. Now we can open the laptop up and begin prying. So, we like to use this end of the spudger to get in between the plastic. Now you're going to want to slide it between the top layer and this bottom shell. Kind of like that. You'll hear the clips undo. 
I just like to slide it along. Go to the other side. All right, just a few more down here, I believe. All right, I think we're good. Cool. Now we've got the bottom off. Set that aside. All right. Now we will close the laptop up. Take out a few ribbon cables for the uh, I.O. board, which is over here. That's what this cable's for. Just fold that out of the way. And the SSD board, which, let's see, get in here with a little plastic tool, flip that up. All right, now we can get the battery connector out. Just like that, pull straight out. Now we'll need to switch back to our Phillips number one for the battery bracket screws. These are all the same length and thread type and everything, so don't worry too much about where screws go where. Let's take the bracket off, take the battery out. So you can see a little bit of bowing where the cells, you can see at most there. You can definitely feel the differences. Anyway. The OEM battery from Dell. You're going to need to transplant this battery cable to the new battery, I believe. Anyways, so before go too far, much, much farther, get the battery out of the container. Standard like plug for Affix, and of course, got all the social media links. Get some stickers. That's pretty cool. I always like their stickers. Yeah, I'm going to have to edit that out. It's got an address on it. Anyway, so they've got really nice sustainable packaging. Just this, like, a paper wrap of sorts. Along with some tissue paper. Put that away. So you got a little tap in here. Once again, put the part number there. The part number is IF244-011-1, I believe. And the part is the Dell WDX0R replacement battery. So after you get the cardboard out, you get a little foam piece. Battery calibration. Charge your newly installed battery up to 100% and keep charging it for at least two more hours. And use your device until it shuts off due to low battery. All right, cool. And then charge it once again to 100%. All right. Comes in a little plastic shell. It's kind of snug in there. All right, let's compare it to the old battery. I see no, none of that belt bulging. Back looks similar. You don't have Dell. But you do have same 42 watt hours, same standard rechargeable with the ion battery, same type. They're both 11.4 volts uh, DC. Doesn't have some of the same warnings or anything, but they're both made in China. You know, they both look pretty similar, so I think they'll both work. Put the old battery off to the side. Let's get the battery cable put onto the battery. Push it in like that. Looks pretty good. All right, pull those cables back out of the way. If you feel good about it, you might take that optical drive cable out because that's it's in the way just a teeny bit. And I like when I'm putting these in to um. There we 
we go, get it lined up. And then push directly on the plastic to push it in. That way we're not pushing on any of the wires or anything. All right, now that we've done that, plug our HDD cable back in. Make sure you get those notches aligned in there. All right, that's good. And the IO board cable, make sure you got that tab flipped up. Once again, make sure it's fully seated. It's a little difficult. I hate ribbon cables, you know. Not near as durable as standard copper. Anyways, put that back in. Now we can reinstall our bracket. Which goes just like that. Lines up with all the screw holes. Grab our screwdriver again. Make sure you're not cross-threading the screws. One thing I noticed, this sits down much more well. Much better, I mean. <laughs> Bad grammar there. Sits down much better because of the battery's not bulging. Previously, it was kind of like spring-loaded almost because of how much it was bulged. So, that's a good sign. Now, if you wanted to, you could power up the laptop before putting the bottom on, which is a good practice, but today I will not be doing that. Pop all the clips in place. All right, go all the way around. All right, now let's get that back on. Let's put our switch back to our Phillips number zero bit. And grab those optical drive screws that go underneath the optical drive. Put them in their place. They're all the same. So any order, just make sure they go in the right holes. One, two, and finally, three. All right, now I can slide the optical drive back in. Slides in no problem. We're now done with our Phillips number zero. So, get our case, put it back in this little foam spot. We don't lose it. Now we'll put the optical drive screws back in, which once again are much smaller than your standard case screw. Here's the case screw on the left, optical drive screw on the right. If you wanted to, you could probably put Loctite back on them, even. So this first optical drive screw goes right here, and the second optical drive screw goes right here. All the optical drive screws, Let's put the hinge screws back in, and the case screws. Once again, these are the bigger screws. Don't get them mixed up. They're all the same length, so you cannot put them in the wrong place. And because we organized them on our little tray over there, it's easy work putting them back where they should go. Don't over tighten them, you don't want to strip them. Just get them until they're snug. They'll feel a pretty hard stop, honestly. So it's not that difficult to tell when you're down enough. All right, just two more screws left. That is the last one. Now, flip it over. Open it up. And test power it on. Press the power button. Oh, I forget this thing's dead. Let's go plug it in. I gotta grab the charger, which is in this bag over here. Just 
and do the little Velcro. Plug up your brick. Looks like we've got enough length. Put the barrel jack in. Got a light. Press the power button. All right. Got this light on, and the screen comes up. Let's put it boot up all the way just to make sure there's no problems. I'm waiting, waiting. <laughs> this thing's got an SSD, which is nice. We upgraded it from, uh, I think it was the Western Digital. It might have been a uh, Toshiba, I forget. But anyway, we put a Crucial MX500 in there. Definitely noticeable performance improvement. Gives a little more life to this older laptop. I mean, it's not super old, obviously, but it's got a dual core four thread. All right, anyways, I think that's as far as we're gonna go for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.